Start to fit your patient for headgear by selecting a face bow using the inner bow placement ruler that is provided in the Ormco face bow case. Measure from the mesial of the molar tube to the midline. In this case, number four was selected. The size number four face bow is selected and the next step will be to fit the inner bow for width and height. Always instruct the patient to position the loops that are facing up into the vestibule. An error in placement would cause the force application to be an error. If your molars are rotated, you may not be able to engage the inner bow into the headgear tubes until the tooth is derotated by an arch wire or transpaddal arch. The loops on the inner bow are to act as stops and for a method of adjustment to the length. The inner bow should be slightly wider than the headgear tubes on your teeth by two to three millimeters to aid in distalization of the maxilla. This will make it so that the patient will have to squeeze the inner bow slightly to insert the face bow into place. Make sure that the inner bow does not hit the brackets. In this case, it was hitting the upper incisor brackets. We need to make the inner bow longer. You can lengthen or shorten the inner bow by adjusting the U-loop. Squeezing with a light wire plier on the flat side. In doing so, we will flatten the loop, making it longer. As we flatten the loop, we will also change the position of the bow in the anterior segment with its height between the lips. This inner bow is positioned slightly lower than we would like and is still hitting the anterior brackets. So we will flatten it out more, lengthening the inner bow. Now the height adjustment appears to be approximately right, where the patient can close her lips without them being forced up or down and clearance of the bracket has been attained. Oftentimes the flattening of the U loop will also make one side longer, which is desirable when you have class two on one side and not the other. Now we will locate the center of resistance with the face bow compass. Inserting the end of the face bow compass into the headgear tube, we will make a mark at the O for an occlusally placed headgear tube, as in the POS prescription, giving us an approximation for the center of resistance of our molar, located approximately the furcation. Now we will reinsert the face bow
and engage our cervical neck strap. This neck strap has a plastic adjustment loop on each side for the application of the force and for determining the line of force on the patient's face. With a cervical neck strap, the force will be positioning and place downward and back. With high pull, it will be up and back. Remember that the line of force is represented by the adjustment strap. If using a neck strap with a string from a module, the string represents the line of force. With those modules with the string, we will have 12 or 24 ounces of force on each side regardless of the distance between the neck and the face bow. With the plastic neck straps, you must adjust the amount of force that is being applied. We'll now take a three-pronged face bow plier and position the outer bow to the patient's face. This side is being squeezed to move the outer bow out. The outer bow should just be in contact with the patient's face unless you are trying to overcorrect for class two. We'll now use a three-pronged face bow plier to position the line of force through the dot previously placed by our face bow compass moving the outer bow up or down until the line of force goes exactly through the dot. Remember that this is 060 wire and should not be bent with your light wire pliers. Now the plastic strap will be cut, leaving one extra dot in case the force that is being applied by this neck strap needs to be reduced. We will now adjust the other side to again line up the line of force. Now instruct the patient how to place and remove the neck strap and face bow. Ask them to hold the outside of the outer bow as they remove the first force module. They will need to squeeze the inner bow as they remove or insert the face bow. Our headgear should be worn for an average of 10 to 14 hours per day, which is usually more convenient at night.